the bell icon to turn on notifications. Tables are undeniably the backbone of access. Information is stored in one or numerous tables and organized into columns, known in access as fields, and rows, which are referred to as records. So in access, we need to create the tables that we need to hold the data. And these tables really form the foundation of everything that comes afterwards. And with these different tables, we can link them together to create relationships. And then we can interrogate that data using queries and reports. So let's look at a basic table. Now we're just going to reopen the file that we're going to be working on throughout the balance of this course. So let's jump to file and I can see it in my recent list. It's this one just here, Global Tech Help Desk. Let's click to reopen. I'm getting a security warning. That's fine. I can click on enable content just to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a database for an IT help desk. So effectively a call logging and tracking system. And we're going to be using a few different tables in order to do that. So we need to really start out by thinking about the types of information that we might want to hold in those tables. For example, I might need a table that holds the actual call information. I might need a table that holds the customer details. I might need a table that holds the employee detail information, the people who actually take and deal with the calls. So let's start out by building a table that holds the call or the ticket information. Now in the course files folder, you're going to find a notepad file called ticket underscore example underscore ben underscore lee dot txt. And this contains the details of the first record that's going to go into our table when we create it. So you can see here, let's just review the fields. We have the ticket number, we have the title. So this is really just a brief description of the problem. His printer is broken. We have the customer name, the location, the region, who that call has been assigned to in the team, who it's been opened by. So effectively who logged the call, the opened date, who it's been resolved by, the resolved date, the priority, the category. And then finally at the bottom, we have a description. So this is going to be our first record in our ticket table. So let's minimize this down and create our first table. Now, if we jump up to the create tab at the top here, we have a group for tables and we have two options here, table and table design. And these differ very, very slightly. One of them automatically gives us an ID field and the other one doesn't. And we're going to be using both of these as we go through the course. So you can really see how they work and how they differ from the other. Now in this first table, we're just going to use the table option. And this is a new blank table. Now notice that this is the one that contains this ID field. And this is a unique identifier for each record that we add. Now we don't have to populate this with any information. It will automatically update with a unique number as we start to add records in. Now what we essentially want to do here is we want to set up the column headings first of all. So those would be things like the customer name, the ticket number, the title of the call. So to do this, we need to right click on the tab and we need to switch views. Remember we were speaking about views in an earlier lesson. Currently we're in datasheet view. We need to jump into design view. Now, as soon as we try to do that, it's going to ask us to give our table a name because currently it's just called the very generic table one. Now, when I'm naming my tables, when I'm working in access, I like to have a standard naming convention. So I always put on the front of my tables TBL to distinguish them from other things like queries and reports. So I'm going to call this tuple ticket and click on OK. So you can see my table over in the navigation pane. And I'm now in design view and design view basically has three columns, field name, data type and description. Now, currently we have one field. This is automatically populated for us. This is the ID field, which will be assigned a unique number when we save the record. And currently it doesn't have a description. So let's add a quick description for this particular field. And remember when I'm referring to fields, I basically mean columns. So my description is that this is the unique identifier for the ticket table. Now, another thing to know is that this ID field has a little key icon over on the left hand side. And that means that this field is the primary key field. Now, I'm not going to get into this in too much detail because we do have another lesson dedicated to primary keys coming up very soon. But just be aware that that's what that key symbol is for the time being. 
So let's quickly refer back to our first ticket example. What is the first column heading or the first field? Well, it is ticket number. So in the field name underneath, I'm going to type in ticket underscore number. Now, every field that we add into our tables, we need to assign a data type. So you need to really look and think, OK, what type of data is going to go into this field or this column? Well, this is going to be a number. So if we click the drop down and notice here, the default is short text. That was something which we could see when we were in our access options. Now, this is going to be a number. So I'm going to change this data type to number and then we're going to add a description ticket number for this call. Now, every time we add a new field into our table, we can see the field properties in the lower part of the screen. So let's run through some of the most important field properties that you might want to review and change. So for this particular ticket number field, it says field size long integer. Now, this basically means that this is a very, very, very long number. Now, this isn't in general. My ticket numbers are about six characters long, so I'm going to change this to integer. Now, these different field sizes here, you can look these up in the help files if you want a full description of what each one is. But a byte is a very small number. An integer is kind of the one that I use most often. And then we have long integer, so on and so forth. So I'm going to change this to integer. And then right towards the bottom where we have required, it's currently set to no. So what we're basically saying here is, is the ticket number required in order to save this record? Well, yes, it is. Every call has a ticket number. So I'm going to double click to change this to yes. We then need to decide if this field is indexed or not. And again, I'm not going to go into indexing too much in this particular lesson because we're going to do that in the next couple of lessons. But indexing is basically related to how we search for records in our database. Some fields you will index, some others you won't. But the way that I look at this is, would I ever want to search for a particular call by the ticket number? Well, yes, I would. So I'm going to double click to say indexed. Yes, duplicates. OK, so now we have two columns or two records in our table. If we switch back to datasheet view, so let's right click and change to datasheet view. It's going to ask us to save the table. Let's click on yes, and we can see how that looks. So we now have effectively two columns in our table, one that's going to hold the ID number and then one that's going to hold the ticket number. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.